is strong with the Force, but he will not be safe until he masters his ability. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my Mandalorian Season 3 Top 10 WTF predictions. There are a bunch of things that they set up and did not resolve big questions that they raised but did not answer during the Season 2 Episode 8 finale. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I will be doing Mandalorian Season 3 bonus videos and bonus videos for all the other spinoff series like the Book of Boba Fett as well as the Ahsoka Tano series and everything else that they announce. And I'll explain what the schedule is going to be when everything is going to premiere. We're still doing the giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just leave all your predictions for Season 3 of Mando on the video. Careful for spoilers for everything that happened on The Mandalorian so far if you haven't seen any of the episodes. But we'll start with number 10. There will be a small time jump for all the characters in the final couple of seasons. So not just season two to season three, but also season three to season four and season four to season five. And they'll just use that to help get the main characters to the huge Grand Admiral Thrawn Netflix Defenders or Avengers Endgame crossover event between all the different spinoff shows a little bit faster. Because there's a lot of legwork that they have to do to develop the characters to where they need to be before they can actually defeat Thrawn. And in addition to a lot of these spin-off series that they've announced, like the Ahsoka Tano series, the Rangers of the New Republic, and now this Book of Boba Fett series, there'll probably be other one-off mini-series along the way, like just one small season of a couple episodes of side characters. Some of those have already been rumored. I'll explain those later in the video, too. But number nine, particularly this is all to also speed up the whole Luke Skywalker Grogu Jedi training plot. I would say mostly actually for him, just because of the way that character works. Grogu is both the best thing and one of the long-term most difficult things for the show to do or will do. Because the way he ages, the way the character works year to year, he doesn't really change. He's still going to look like this little kid in another 20 years when these characters are starting to get really, really old. And part of the magic of the way they use that character on the show right now is it's better to have him not speak, for instance. Like if he started being really verbal like Yoda when he got older, they lose a lot of the magic of moments like this in the finale. Like, his communication seems much more impactful when he reaches out and touches Mando's helmet, and he instantly knows what that means, taking the helmet off so Grogu can finally see his face. Then his tiny little hand reaches out and touches him, and everyone starts crying. I'm not crying, you're crying. Even Mando is crying. So you don't really want to change that aspect of the character. But like Luke Skywalker said, talent without training is nothing, and he won't be safe until he becomes a full Jedi Knight, finishes his training. And when Ahsoka Tano was telling us about his backstory at the Jedi Temple, if you think about his time as a Padawan during the prequel era, he was a Padawan for like 20 years before Revenge of the Sith happened in Order 66, and it really only seemed like he'd begun to tap into his potential. So it's going to take a long, long time for him to become a full Jedi Knight, way longer than someone, say, like Luke Skywalker, who matures physically much faster. So that's why it makes more sense to do some kind of time jumps to just speed through some of the day-to-day -day for that so that all the characters get to the good stuff. But number eight, that being said, during The Mandalorian Season 3, we probably won't see a ton of CG Uncanny Valley Luke Skywalker. Mark Hamill isn't suddenly going to become a main character on the show. But the show also isn't going to get rid of Grogu. They're getting better with their CG face replacement. I understand why they want to keep the original trilogy actors and not recast. But it's still crazy expensive to do those kinds of things. And the more they do those scenes, the less magical, the less impactful those needle drop moments become. But think about it this way. Even though Grogu left Mando and the show is called The Mandalorian, being a Mandalorian isn't so much about your DNA. That was what I think that whole conversation with Boba Fett was about. Like, you're no Mandalorian. Like, she talks about Jango Fett not being his father, but being his donor and in donating his DNA to become another clone. Way back during season one, the armor said you are now a clan of two, a clan of Mandalorians. Eventually, I think they will reveal, as a lot of people have theorized, that the title of the show, The Mandalorian, also refers not just to Din Djarin's Mandalorian character, but also to Grogu himself. He's also worth way too much to the show, metaphorically, for a number of different reasons. Like, yes, you skip through a lot of the day-to-day -day Jedi training, but they make so much money on Grogu merchandise that they're not going to suddenly take him out of the equation and just not sell new Grogu merchandise. So because he left Mando, though, we probably won't see quite as much of Grogu as we normally would. He won't be traveling around in Mando's hip pocket everywhere he goes. 
But Moff Gideon had that big speech with him when he was waving the Darksaber in his face. You're getting pretty good at that, but it makes you oh so sleepy. Because he's untrained, eventually we'll probably see him use his Force telekinesis without getting super tired super quickly. And as a follow-up to that, number seven, yeah, we will see the beginnings of Luke Skywalker's Jedi School, a very, very early version of it. It probably won't look anything like the one we saw in Kylo Ren's memories, the one he and the Knights of Ren burned down when he came back to kill everyone. And a lot of you, since he went off with Luke Skywalker, now have been doing the math on this. And you're like, wait a minute, obviously Grogu's going to live for another 850 years, so he'd be alive during the new trilogy. Does this mean that Kylo Ren eventually kills Grogu if he killed everyone at Luke's school? And I think we can all agree that that would be the most crap story twist ever. Here's this amazing character, let's kill him off as fast as possible after this really hopeful moment and amazing goodbye that they just had. This moment was all about Grogu going to serve his higher calling. Like, Grogu is the future of the Jedi Order. He'll watch over it for the next 850 years, like Yoda saw hundreds and hundreds of generations of Jedi come and go over his 900 years. Grogu is not Yoda, but he's the next Yoda-like Grand Master Jedi to come along, or eventual Grand Master Jedi. So yes, it's probably safe to say Grogu will not be killed by Kylo Ren or the Knights of Ren like Luke Skywalker's other Jedi Padawans. But eventually, of course, Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni will have to explain what he was doing during the events of the new movies. Number six, when season three begins though, Mando will probably still have the Darksaber, but he and Bo-Katan will probably have called some sort of temporary truce. Like he is the classic reluctant hero in the situation, the Luke Skywalker prototype monomyth character. Remember Luke Skywalker's arc during A New Hope. Obi-Wan Kenobi gives Luke Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber and tells him, you should come to Alderaan with me. And Luke's like, I can't do that. I have all these chores. I have to be a moisture farmer and help my Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. I don't have time to go fight in any Star Wars. Cut to one act later in the movie and boom, he's training as a Jedi on the Millennium Falcon on his way to a cloud of dust that used to be Alderaan. Everyone press F in the chat to pay respects. A version of that arc just happened to Mando during season two. Bo-Katan tells him, come fight in our war and help your people, fellow Mandalorians, reclaim their heritage, take back what was taken from them. And he's like, I don't have time for that. I have to take Grogu to the Jedi. Now that he's done that, he's also agreed, as per the terms of their deal at the beginning of the episode, to help Bo-Katan and the other Mandalorians take back the planet. So number five, as a lot of you have also theorized, because Mando still has the Darksaber, even though he doesn't want it, another classic trope, he has the strongest claim to the throne of Mandalore, which kind of makes him the new Mandalore, the new leader of their people. Unlikely hero, gets caught up in galactic war, then becomes an iconic leader through circumstances outside of his control. But Bo-Katan is still the one calling the shots. At least, if you asked her who was in charge, she would say that she's in charge, even though she'll probably just ask Mando to go along with her plan and use him as a symbol to rally more Mandalorians out of hiding to her banners. Her whole plan right now is to build their forces before they can attempt to retake the planet, so Mando is really useful to her as a symbol. Look, Mandalorians now have the Darksaber again. Come rally to our banner and we'll retake what was taken from us. Is part of that plot though, number four, the working title for The Mandalorian Season 3 while they're filming episodes is Buccaneer, which is a Spanish word for pirate. And during Season 2 Episode 3, The Heiress, the Imperials were calling Bo-Katan and the Night Owls pirates. So it sounds like a lot of Season 3 will be Mando living the pirate's life as they go around gaining resources through legitimate and not so legitimate ways. But the title of the show is still The Mandalorian, it's just that instead of following him on bounty hunting side quests week to week while he was with Grogu, the plot follows more of what he's doing with the other Mandalorians, and Bo-Katan becomes a bigger character than she was during season two. He's still the main character, but here's the thing with all those spin-off shows that they announce. Number three, Cara Dune spent the whole episode talking about the information that she and the New Republic want to get from Moff Gideon because he's former Imperial Security Bureau, and they're literally the information gathering arm of the Empire. They deal in all the secrets, so that's why he's such an encyclopedia of knowledge. The New Republic name drop during that conversation is probably just the teaser that most of that plot will be covered on the Rangers of the New Republic spinoff series. They don't have a premiere date for that yet, but it'll probably be sometime during 2022, along with the Ahsoka Tano series. Like I said, the Ahsoka Tano series will probably mostly be her searching for Grand Admiral Thrawn in the Outer Rim and Ezra Bridger. We'll also probably see more of those Star Wars Rebels animated characters come into live action. Maybe Rex is still alive. If Tamura Morrison is doing all this Boba Fett stuff, maybe he could also come back as an older version of Rex. 
There's also a rumor that in addition to this Book of Boba Fett miniseries, like obviously it's going to be a much smaller series than one of the normal big seasons, there was a scooper recently, Daniel Richmond, that was claiming that they would do a Book of Bo-Katan miniseries one-off as well. But it would obviously be much smaller than a normal big season for a full-blown spinoff. So what's probably happening with their grand design in these crossover shows is that the shows that they announced at the Disney Investor Meeting, the Ahsoka series and the New Republic series, will be full-blown shows. They'll get like eight episodes per season, but the Book of Boba Fett and the other one-off miniseries will get way less than that, and that's probably why they're not billing them as full-blown series. Number two, regardless, all the characters from all these different series that they've introduced and the new ones that they will eventually introduce will all cross over to each other's shows. That's why they're all set during the same time period. It's just that, for example, on the Ahsoka Tano series, we'll probably get way more of Ahsoka's flashbacks to the Clone Wars when she was younger, maybe Force Ghost Anakin Skywalker with Hayden Christensen in present day, maybe some Darth Vader flashbacks. Whereas when Ahsoka Tano crosses over into Mandalorian episodes, you just won't see quite as much of her. But all the plots of all the shows are slowly pushing towards this eventual Grand Admiral Thrawn Avengers Endgame final battle in a couple years. But we probably won't see him on screen till maybe like the end of The Mandalorian Season 3 as a big WTF surprise or the season finale of the Ahsoka Tano series. Moff Gideon has just been captured and it seems like he's going to spend a lot of the first season of the New Republic series going full Hannibal Lecter in a prison cell while they try to get information out of him. But he'll also show up on The Mandalorian Season 3 as well probably. In number one, Mando will probably come close to seeing Grogu again during season three, but they'll probably leave a big full reunion for further off. Luke Skywalker said he'd be in danger until he finished his training, and that's going to take a long time. So for all of season three, he'll still be in a lot of potential danger. And we'll learn more about what Moff Gideon and Grand Admiral Thrawn were planning to do with his blood. When they said that there's potential within him to bring order to the galaxy, that feels like they're hinting at the Jedi cloning plot from the original Thrawn trilogy. They probably won't do that exact plot, but it just feels like they want to use Grogu's DNA to create clones that are Force-sensitive that they can control like Dark Troopers. Like Dr. Pershing kept talking about eliminating the weaknesses from their troops. And in this scene from Episode 4, he kept talking about the test subjects not being able to handle injections of Grogu's blood, so they're trying to perfect that cloning process. Right now, just in terms of when all the episodes are coming, we know that the Boba Fett show, The Book of Boba Fett, will start in December next year. Lucasfilm has said that The Mandalorian Season 3 will start Christmas Day next year. While I was finishing this video, Lucasfilm just announced that Jon Favreau is going to be going on Good Morning America for a really big interview to talk about the finale on Monday. So I'll do a video for whatever he talks about, but they said that he's going to clarify a lot of these big details. But everyone post all your predictions in the comments below. I will do a full Luke Skywalker video next, so as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see that when I post it. Leave all your requests in the comments too. Congratulations Alex102539, you're the giveaway winner from my last big video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for that full Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 8 finale video, and click here for the Book of Boba Fett teaser in that big post credit scene. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, this is the way.